Rulantica is Europa Park's water park. This water park is located just under three miles away from Europa Park at Hotel Kronosar. Rulantica opened exclusively as an indoor water park late in 2019 for the cost of 250 million euros, but the park recently opened an outdoor expansion for the summer of 2021. I spent an evening at Rulantica after a full day at Europa Park, and I thought this water park had distinctly different feel than any other water park I've visited. But is it worth visiting in your next Europa Park trip? Find out in this review. One of the most impressive things about Rulantica are the hours. One of the most frustrating things with a lot of water parks at hotels is that they close before the amusement park. Rulantica is always open later than Europa Park. As of this recording, Rulantica is open from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. And if you're a Europa Park guest, you can get in even earlier at 9 a.m. So there is plenty of time to enjoy this water park. And there are several different admission options. Full day tickets cost 42 euros as of 2021, but you can also purchase evening tickets after 5 p.m. for 39 euros, or moonlight tickets after 7 p.m. for 29 euros. I used the moonlight ticket and I had roughly two hours at the water park because I didn't want to leave Europa Park early. Thankfully, two hours was plenty of time to ride all the slides that I wanted to. Along with the admission price, you also have to pay for parking. Like Europa Park and several other European parks, you buy your parking online or at an automated machine and you need to show your ticket upon leaving the lot. A lot of indoor water parks look sort of ugly from the outside, but I'm proud to say that's not the case with Rulantica. Since it's part of the highly themed Kronosar Resort, the building has a nice facade to dress it up. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. The real wow moment comes when you get inside. The lobby for Rulantica looks more like a traditional hotel lobby than the ticket area for a theme park. And the coolest thing about this area are all these miniature models of both Rulantica and Europa Park. The amount of detail in these miniatures was incredible, and it was an attraction in itself. To enter Rulantica, you are given a Rula band which is an RFID wristband that opens and closes your locker. And you can also use this band to make purchases. And one interesting thing about this band is that you can make purchases without loading your credit card onto it. So how does that work? Upon leaving Rulantica, you need to go to this automated kiosk or ticket booth where your Rula band is scanned. You then need to pay any additional charges you accrued before being allowed to leave. It's an interesting system, but it does create a log jam when you go to leave at the end of the night because everyone needs to pay up. Since Rulantica is brand new, the lockers and changing rooms are modern. The facility as a whole is top notch, and it's spotless. But then it's time to enter the indoor water park, and that's the real wow moment. It is rare to find a themed water park, and it's exceedingly rare to find a water park with as much detail as Rulantica. The indoor area is overwhelming with all the detail and the several themed areas. The two with the main clusters of slides are the most impressive. You have Winter Hall, which is a giant wintry cavern with these giant stalactites extending from the ceiling. This is to your left when you enter Rulantica. On the opposite side of the park is Ragnarkor, which is a city on stilts. You have these classical villages elevated above the pathway, which is a really cool aesthetic. And then in the middle, you have a massive wave pool and the themed lazy river that takes you through all sorts of caves. As I mentioned earlier, I visited at night. The fantastical themes combined with the lighting gave the place a dreamlike atmosphere. The theme is so well done that Europa Park even has a ride themed to this watery world. The recently opened Snorri Tor and Dark Ride. It gives a unique synergy between the parks. There is one negative I have about the water park and that's how challenging it is to find the water slides. Very few are visible from the midway. Most of them are hidden behind the theme facades and or extend outside the building. I knew the general location for the slides, but it still took a little bit to find the different sets of stairs that serviced each slide. And another obstacle is making sure you enter the line for the correct slide. In a similar criticism to what I had about Volcano Bay, the slide names are tricky to pronounce and easy to mix up. So you really need to do your research in advance to know which slide is which, especially because again, you cannot see most of the slides even by their entrances, so you really have to know those names. 
it's a bit easier to locate the slide you want instead of Galrock, which is the slide tower in the outdoor section. Every slide there is atop this giant water fortress. This area is similarly whimsical lighting to the indoor section, and I was surprised that the area stayed open even as temperatures plummeted into the high 50s at night. Thankfully, all of Rulantica has this heated water, which is a guilty pleasure of mine at any water park. Rulantica reports the wait times for all the slides on the official Europa Park app, but very few people are going to be carrying around their phones with them at a water park. Thankfully, there are these giant boards showing the wait times for all attractions simultaneously. But to get the most use of it, you again need to know which slide is which. One additional thing I'd like to see in the future is a display board at each individual ride entrance showing the wait time. Europa Park does this at their dry park, so I am optimistic it could be done in the future at Rulantica. It would really help. On the night I visited, lines were minimal. All of the body slides were walk-ons and most of the tube slides had minimal weights as well. The longest lines were for the family raft slides and the bowl slide, which hovered around 20 to 30 minutes. Like Europa Park, the lines remain open until park close, so if there's a slide you want to do with a really long line, I'd save it for the end of the night. This was the first water park I ever visited in Europe, and one of the most striking things to me was that many slides did not have any attendance at the top. Guests themselves were responsible for following the automated red lights and green lights atop most of the slides. Compare that to America where you see an attendant atop each and every slide. As with Europa Park, the staff members are efficient and quite friendly, and most of them speak multiple languages, which is a major help because Europa Park pulls guests from all over Europe. Moving on to the slide lineup, it's pretty good for a park that's less than two years old. The one slide type that the park is missing in my opinion, for a park of the scale at least, is a water coaster, and I hope one is added in the future. The most popular slides are in Winter Hall, Icebreaker, and Tva Fall were walk-ons the night I visited. Tva Fall is a relatively standard tube slide with a few small dips and tight turns. Icebreaker is a short body slide that drops you directly into the pool, which makes it only for strong swimmers. The other three slides were the slides that had the 20 to 30 minute waits. Stormwind is the standard pro slide bowl slide layout that starts with a sizable plunge, but this one is entirely enclosed, and the bowl section is this dazzling lighting and cool music to make it stand out. Svalgar Wright is your standard family raft slide, and last but not least, you have Winter Wright, which was a half pipe slide. The drop into the half pipe had some air time, and the dragon adjacent to the slide looks stunning. Over at Rainnacore, you have the park's most extreme attraction in Dug Drop and Vild Fall. These are from a company I've never heard of in Aquarena, but the slides themselves were smooth and intense. The initial plunge gives a good falling sensation, and the slide lasts a lot longer than expected, because you couldn't see much of it off-ride. You have a few more intense and forceful turns before hitting this final splashdown. But the most notable thing about this slide is the drop itself. After the guests themselves close the pod, there are a few options to get down. If you do nothing, an employee nearby starts a 3 second countdown. Alternatively, you can hit this green button next to you that immediately opens the chute and drops you. On my first ride, I thought you had to hit the green button to signal you were ready to the employee. So imagine my shock and shriek when all of a sudden I dropped after hitting that button. It was a very memorable ride and one of the funnier experiences I've had at a park. You also have Hoogan and Moonen, which are two racing tube slides. The slides themselves have no notable elements, but the racing element is executed better than Cheetah Chase because the sections where you pass the other slide have no barriers. Moving outdoors, you have that aforementioned rain fortress with a few slides. The largest is Storm Rock, which is a weird body bowl slide. This one started with a usually fast plunge, but instead of spiraling around the bowl and being comically dumped into the pool below, you immediately hit a splashdown and come to a near stop. You then need to actually get up and walk over to a second slide in the middle to get back down to the bottom. It is a much less thrilling setup, but it does make the slide more family friendly and it removes the need of being a strong swimmer to ride. Most of the other slides are relatively tame but the one other large body slide in Spiral Rock has a surprisingly tight spiral 
that actually pull some good G's. That one caught me off guard. Then the water fortress also has the familiar water features such as a dump bucket, and these are unavoidable if you want to access the slides in the tower. In the indoor section, you also have a few different kids areas that are also themed with a smaller water fortress and pint-sized water slides. And for those who want to relax, you have several different pools and lazy rivers in both the indoor and outdoor sections. So do I recommend Rulantica? I would prioritize your time at Europa Park, but I do recommend the Moonlight Ticket. This was plenty of time for me to experience the atmosphere and all the major slides without sacrificing any park time at Europa. I personally probably couldn't spend an entire day here, but the park has a deep collection of slides and an incredible atmosphere. Rulantica is one of the most visually stunning water parks I have ever visited, so if you're big into atmosphere and theming, I would maybe put more effort into visiting Rulantica. So those are my thoughts on Rulantica, the new water park at the Europa Park Resort in Rust, Germany. What are your thoughts on this water park, whether it be the slides or theming? Is this a place you want to visit? Let me know down in the comments. Now, I'm sorry if I butchered the name of any of the water slides, but they were kind of tricky for me to pronounce. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.